Okay, good afternoon, guys. Welcome to another live trading clinic. My name's Steve Ruffley. We're going to go uh, focus on the Bank of England today. Uh, obviously, a lot of these events uh, are unchanged. The people say that they're, you know, they're a non-event. But I think I've proved over the last kind of three, six, twelve months, eighteen months that it doesn't really matter what the market thinks. You know, what the the, the so-called experts and writers think. But what we're interested in is what traders think, what traders do. So yes, we're expecting unchanged from uh, the interest rates today from the Bank of England. But it doesn't mean we won't see a change in the asset purchase doesn't mean they won't see any comments coming out that lead us to understand what's going to happen in the future at the end of the day janet yellen mark carney uh mario draghi very rarely come out and say well they never come out and say yes we're going to move on rates or yes we're going to do this it's always you know very very, very guarded and our job as a trader is to interpret this fundamental information in our own way and see if there's any edge to be had so we'll have a look at the pound against the dollar today we'll have a look at the FTSE. obviously we've seen that um the election was a bit of a shock to some people in the UK. The Conservatives have got back in power. I think in hindsight, it's fairly obvious, isn't it, that London, everyone that's got a house, everyone wants to protect what they've got, are not really going to vote for Labour. And the alternatives were pretty dire. You know, the Lib Dems were a joke. And let's face it, you know, we've got some kind of stability and growth under Cameron. So I guess people who just four more years of that is, is, you know, they're happy enough. So the situation in the UK now is pretty much unchanged. So we've seen the FTSE take a, a bit of a gap open uh, when we, we before we heard that result uh, that was confirmed, and the markets have taken that very positively. I'm still expecting uh, some sell-off in the indices. Uh, you're mainly the FTSE for a little bit, just because we know now we know what you know really the next four years uh, have, have got in play. So you'd see some natural profit taking as the FTSE is still relatively high. But I think until interest rates go up, as I've said in the Financial Times, Bloomberg, Reuters, many a times that the FTSE still got room to hit 7,300, and until interest rates you know are moved in the US or UK. We're going to still buy the indices because there's no better return on your money. Simple. You know, you get no money back in the bank. So until there's a better alternative uh, than putting money in an indices, even though they're as high as they are, people are still going to invest and push this bull market higher. And when interest rates finally do, right, you know, uh, are hiked because, you know, these things are cyclical. You can't keep interest rates low forever. No matter what government you are, no matter what, you know, your objectives are, you cannot have interest rates so low for so long. So when they do inevitably go up, things will change. People will have their debt burdens massively increased. People will start to cash out of physical assets and people put money back in the bank where it's designed to be. So again, we're going to see some shifts. It's just a timing matter, isn't it? Trading, as I've always said, it's not about being right. It's about being right at the right time. So interest rates, you know, might not be on agenda right now in, in that they're, they're inevitably going to rise or they're, 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 we're just around the corner from a hike. It's much more bigger bigger picture things than that right now. It's understanding the language, understanding what we think could potentially happen over the coming months, the coming quarters and coming years. You know, these things are like trying to, uh, you know, stop a, a, a cruise ship. You know what I mean? You can't just stop in a couple of feet. You know, you have to give it enough time in order to, you know, kind of to plan, to prepare and, you know, make these manoeuvres. It's not as simple as, yes, we're going to start raising uh, rates now and then that's it done. You know, it's a lot more complex than that because it affects every facet of the financial markets and people's lives. <clears throat> so before we start, as always, risk warning. Remember that spend better in CD trading, carry higher risk or capital consulting losses to the huge news deposit. The paper is for everyone, so please ensure you fully understand the risk involved. The information comes provided here under no circumstances and offers solicitation to invest, not the nature of your investment advice. The information please be accurate the data is produced. Education only, content the webinars, post video of the moderator, not insurance.com. Content is not constitute financial investment or tax advice. Insurance.com is like accept and liability to the content consumed during this session. So we're going to go over the charts. We'll probably focus on the FTSE and the pound. Uh, you know, the because this is UK data and it doesn't really affect uh, the European markets or certainly the US markets unless something was, you know, very uh, out of line that like we had a, you know, 25 point basis hike. But that's not going to happen today. But you never know. Multiple time frame trading. I'll, under, I'll, I'll let you understand my thinking, my mythology, you know, going back in the past to be what happened in the future. Fundamental analysis, which is really what we're focusing on today. Anything new that comes into the market, any new bit of uh, information. Uh, if anything worth trading, I will trade it today, but uh, we'll have to see what the markets give us. <clears throat> so we can look at the FTSE again after the non-farm payroll, which came in line. The markets didn't really know how to take that data. Uh, we had uh, the revision came into the markets uh, for the last non-farm payroll actually down. So a lot of the bad non-farm payroll we saw previously was attributed to the weather, but actually the revision was lower than the actual headline figure. So that, again, uh, brought some kind of uh, doubt into the markets. So in gold, we saw this big spike up. 
markets came back down to pretty much where we started, went up and went back down again. So really, gold didn't know how to take the non-farm payrolls, but we're still below that key 50% pivot, so at 11847. So as I said in my non-farm payroll, if we can continue to stay below 11847 and below, we've got some big targets to hit, and below 180, below one kind of 176. You know, gold's inevitably, in my mind, going to look to target that $1,000. I think with all the hedge funds, you know, we don't see cash for gold on the uh, on the TV anymore. All the kind of retail money's out. All, a lot of the professional money now is out of gold. So I think gold's really got no alternative but to um, to test them lower levels at $1,000 for me. just makes perfect sense. So with that, we you know, the gold looking to, uh, to look weak and come back down. We have seen a lot of strength in the indices. You know, again, the... Uh, the S&P took the uh, non-farm payroll, even though it was in line, fairly positively, and we're still towards the highs, uh, still towards the highs in the FTSE. Uh, DAX, again, you know, is uh, is eyeing up these key psychological levels, you know, uh, uh, 1,700, uh, maybe, you know, get back to 1,800 and above. Um, so, yeah, I mean, generally, as I've said, as I've explained, we're going to continue strong in the indices until there's a better alternative. OK, we might be too high in lots of people's opinions, but that's just an opinion. I mean, we're talking about the amount of money that's going into the stock markets, you know, the amount of uh, hedge funds, the amount of, you know, one percenters that are putting in big sums of money in. That doesn't really matter, you know, what the average retail guy does. It's all about, you know, where the big money is. And that's clearly in the indices. And that's why. We're not seeing these big pullbacks. And every time we do, I mean, I'll use the uh, the foot as a prime example. When I was speaking to people before, you know, this was the trend line we were looking at on the dailies. And I said, if we hold above that, then the market's going to take, you know, some sort of positivity. Again, we saw that the uh, Conservatives came in. So Conservatives, majority now, four more years of small growth, but still growth. Market gapped up, couldn't go back, so I had to make new highs. Look on that on the dailies. Every time when I was talking before non-farm payrolls, I said, every time charts we don't close towards the bottom of a candle a daily candle when we open up the next day we go higher every single time okay so what we're going to do here when the market closed above that trend line and didn't close towards the bottom we go higher so anytime you see these big rejections on the daily flip back onto your hourly and then you know do what you need to do you know use your bollinger bands use your levels of support and resistance you know what i call levels break or bounce so a market's trending they've got to break levels not bounce so every time we get these green levels the market's not looking to come back down back to that trend it's looking to break and go forward so you break get to the next one break to the next one all the way to that 50 percent all the way to the the red lines i mean it's Again, in hindsight, these things are very, very easy. But what we have to do as a trader is be trading, you know, like here. We have to be trading here, and, and we don't know anything in this right-hand space. So we're saying market's coming down. Okay, one, two, three, very strong selling hours. We break that trend, okay, but we don't hold on to it. So what's the picture going to look like in the next five hours, 10 hours, 15 hours? What's the next 20 candles going to show me? Yeah, we're going to be like this. Holding along this trend line, we're going to be like this, holding on the top of the trend line, or we're going to be like this, gap, and going to make new highs. The whole point is, is predicting what happened in the past, or what we can see, and using that to predict the future. Okay, that's all trading is. So, again, we have to take in that 20% fundamental information about the UK election, and that's not what this was. So, you know, if you've listened to my gap training webinar, your gap can only do one or two things. It can either attempt to close fully or partially, or... discount it and carry on so the market didn't even try to close this gap okay and then so that means all this information this positivity that traders are using to buy the the markets is still there so until we close that gap we're going to make fresh highs in the in the footsie and as i've said i reckon by in the next two months we'll hit 7300 that's about as high as i think the footsie can go for me then we'll creep down and i think we'll inevitably see a lot of profit taking towards the end of the year when interest rates are going to be much more in focus so right now, it's bullish. So we get very, very low. As long as we don't close that gap, you can still buy some low points in the charts and expect the foot to go back up. Okay. So any more positivity from anything that's said regarding interest rates or the asset put, you know, buyback purchase, if it stays in line at $375 billion, then maybe any kind of red candle is worth buying yeah, in the FTSE. We look to buy low and sell high. Remember, that's all we're ever doing, isn't it? Buying low, selling high. Yeah, that's all we're ever trying to do in the market is just find some value. So the other one that I think is particularly interesting is the uh, is the pound. So, uh, yeah, as I said, I was wrong on interest rates. Uh, I really did think that the UK would move first. But there we go. You know, I don't always get things right. I'm not interested in being right. I'm interested in being right, right, right. So the right time. I could say 10 
it's a bit of fundamental information. But the, the technicals are saying on the on the very small time frames, ready for a sell. So to be aware of, if the market and short term traders are short looking for a sell, okay, then that means they can be easily manipulated. So we don't very often see two confirming, you know, red uh, signals in both these indicators. So if the market was, you know, again to hover around and went up very high, it could start breaking these levels very aggressively because any short term trader, okay, won't be able to stay in. They won't be able to stay in the market if the market goes up 25, 56 ticks. You know, and above that, we don't see any resistance at all up until this level up here, at one spot five seven five one one. So by understanding your technicals, you understand that if anybody's thinking, well, the pound's pretty high now, it should come down, and they're not taking uh, into account this information that we're going to get uh, in five minutes' time, then if this market goes 25, 30 ticks in a straight line up, then any short-term traders will be squeezed out. Okay? So it's understanding my 80-20 rule as a whole. So a lot of green on the 15-minute candles, and good, you know, uh, two solid green candles on the um, on the hourly. So we go back to the, the bigger time frame, we can understand you know, what that really means. We've seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months of selling in the pound when we finally fit, realize that the, uh, the, the interest rate is going to move quick. Well, but more, they were going to move uh, up before they were in the UK and the US. So that just means that people buy more dollars than pounds. So we had that little bit of a rally where the market, you know, again, had to take some sort of profit. They had every opportunity then to, to crash down and take these lows in the pound. But people have voted, you know, with the feet, with the euro being so weak, the pound's actually quite, you know, a, a relatively strong place to put some of your money. So you can see at the low point of the chart on the monthlies, you know, the longer term investors are starting to buy back. So we're seeing two green monthly candles. So on your weeks, again, saw this big reversal down here. OK, that might be some fear leading up to the election. You know, it could be anything. But we quickly bought all that back. So it's looking really, like I said, we're going to uh, hold above one spot five four, uh, one four, one spot five five. And I reckon we'll get to uh, one spot six four by the, uh, by the not too distant future. Um, I think, you know, obviously the 50 percent Fibonacci would be where you'd look to get. And that's just up here. So realistically, you're going to find value at one spot five eight. OK, on the higher time frame. So we've got quite easily uh you know another you know another three thousand ticks or so you know we could easily you know you'll get get higher i mean again once we've had this hard bounce here and uh, then the longer term um shorts start liquidating then you can see on the indicator you know, we're, we're very very green you know we're far so, you know, look at your dailies. Again, every time we see um, any kind of rejection, yeah, where the market doesn't want to move any lower, we start to see green. You know, just count patterns. You know, one, two, three, four, five down days. You see a couple of up days. So, again, you know, look for you know, maybe the, the buy momentum is going to be out. So look for a couple of down days in the pound. Get down to these levels here at one spot, five, two, uh, six, eighty, and then buy it back. Okay. So, you know, we've seen one, two, three, four, five green days so you're gonna to have to see some profit taken on you at some point and that's how trading works looking for them value opportunities no point buying now towards the top of the range where if it's come down and then buy low yep sell it high so as i said pretty much uh, i think you know a lot more room on the upside for the uh for the pound so we've only got two minutes now before we hear this bank of england uh, rate announcement we don't think there's gonna be any change but keep one eye out for the uh 375 of asset purchase facility uh, if there's any change to that and any other comments that come out might we might see a move in the markets Okay, guys, so what we'll do is we'll probably focus on, on, on the pound dollar here and have a, a one eye on the foot tick because, again, UK data is, um, you know, is important. Gold's always interesting around about fundamental information, uh, fundamental information and data, so let's keep an eye on gold. So really just focusing on this L here. Gold, footy, pound. So expect it unchanged, but let's have a look out for this 375 asset purchase and see if anything else comes into the market. Okay, one minute. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. 
Unchanged. Okay, unchanged, un unchanged the headline, as expected. Let's wait for the asset. Okay, so haven't closed towards the top in the pound. But we haven't started really seriously to retrace, so potentially could go a little higher. Okay. Oh, I got this uh, asset purchase to come through yet. I've not heard anything on the wire. So again, remaining strong in the S&P. FTSE still. Again, you look for these low points and these wicks. Okay, pounds not really moved at all. Gold's just winging around, really. Not kind of too sure of its direction now. If it wants to go up or down. So again, still not heard about this asset purchase facility yet. Uh, it's through now, yeah. 375 billion in line. Okay, so everything's in line as expected. So I suspect no news is good news. I would say so. You would expect the the bull run in the FTSE to continue. I guess if we don't retrace back into the lower regions of this, uh, you know, of these two hourly green candles, we should, you know, see an attempt. Of a new high made above one spot five four nine seven three. Uh, your next target would be one spot five five one eight three. Above that in the pound, uh, one spot five 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 one nine. So pretty much absolutely everything as expected. So you'd have to say that on balance, no news is good news. Okay. So we've got the Conservative government in, which very you know kind of you know modest growth, but um, you know growth is growth. What we can also see is. Um, you know, again, from the technicals that the markets may be, you know, again, a lot of respects overbought. But really, as I said, as I explained, you know, with interest rates so low, there's nowhere else really to, uh, to to put your money. So that's why, you know, again, any low point and rejection that we've seen here in the FTSE is generally going to be bought up. So you expect the FTSE to, to look back to target 7.085. We could be looking at fresh highs in the FTSE, um, you know, yet again. You know, if you look at the uh, the monthly chart, we haven't got a great deal to go before we can make uh, the new fresh uh, all time highs. And again, there'll be stops being triggered above that. And all you have to do is look at the, how strong the trend line is in the monthly. I mean, it's just, you know, it's too too strong. You know, it's too out of kilter. You know, the market, you know, that it looks better on the weeklies. But I mean, when it we're very correct, it's going to be like nothing we've ever seen. I mean, we just see the FTSE will drop. You know thousands of points in a, in a day and I know people have argued with me before you can't see a flash crash and you know the market designed for that not to happen the one thing we have proved over the years is we can't stop anything you know we can't stop market forces if you close a market and uh, you know you don't allow people to sell it well I think it's going to think it's going to happen it opens up the next day you know anyone who thinks you can control the markets is an idiot you know the markets will do well Ever the market wants people want to pull orders people want to sell huge quantities they will and you think about how many you know, how long the FTSE's taken to get to these highs, how many contracts at each price have been traded. You know, it's huge, huge amounts, huge amounts. You know, the volume has been absolutely, you know, insane towards the top of the range. So once you start breaking these, you know, these higher ranges, and these higher parts where people are heavily invested, it doesn't take long before you hit stops on the low side and the market just goes into free fall. You know, it's just the way things go, isn't it? So realistically, I would say that Going into the U.S. session, it's trying to if you you know if I would say you know stay. I you know it's difficult, isn't it? Because you, you can see that the S and P does want to kind of you know take some profit. But generally, what will happen is the S and P will, will, will open. It will go down. It will go down. It will go down to a logical point where people think, ah, oh, it's a good place to buy. It'll go down. It'll go down. It'll go down all the way, and then it will stop, go back up, and then go back to these higher levels. So. Yes, actually, I have to admit for once, you know, that was completely in line data and there was nothing being said on the wires. So, unfortunately, that was about as as tame as the Bank of England announcement is going to be, I'm afraid. So, we can't always get, you know, any kind of good movement. But I would say at the end of the day that it's carrying on what happened in the past. So, as I said, you know, I'm expecting to see a sell-off in the indices, uh, just some normal profit taking because we know the UK elections, are, you know, are sorted now. We know that interest rates will be... You know, on you know David Cameron's and the Bank of England's you know, agenda at some point, but 
I just feel that with the Conservatives in now, that they don't really have anything to prove, do they? They've got the, um, you know, they've got the uh, majority vote. Uh, the only problem, you know, we can see on the horizon is Scotland. But you know, Scotland had their referendum. You know, they said no to it. So really, you know, what's what's the point in pushing for another referendum and expecting a different result? You know, you can't you can't just keep changing your mind and going yes. Well, we'll keep doing a referendum until we get what we want. You know, it's if the people vote and say no, then the people vote will say no again. Has anybody got any, any questions or thoughts, guys? The markets look fairly quiet right now, to be honest. I mean, there's there's not a great deal of uh, of new information coming through today. Um, again, it's a bit of the uh, you know the kind of hangover from the non-farm payroll. Um, but I think you know let's wait for the U.S. session to pick up now. And what I suspect is I still think that um, that gold's got a way to come down. So as long as we hold below that pivot at one eight eight, that's what four seven lows in gold are going to be hit. And I would say that any strong down moves in the S and P or the FTSE uh, will be short lived and bought back. So, any any questions, any thoughts, any products you'd like to go through or talk about while you've got me here, guys? Anything you'd like to um, to ask? Anything, any thoughts you've got on the election? Do you think there's going to be any you know continued strength in the pound, or is that it for the pound? It's going to go back down. Do we think the eurozone's fixed? Do you think we should all be buying these lows in the euro? We're just not going to get to parity at one spot, not like all the all the big banks say. Nothing, guys. No, no questions. No thoughts at all on the markets. I find that hard to believe. There must be somebody who's got some sort of opinion. Well, we're all a quiet bunch today. So again, we're just seeing gold head back up. Um, well, you know, without uh, you know, gold is either going to have to go up or go down, isn't it? It's going to have to uh, you know do something. And I still think that that pivot point is very, very strong here at that uh, one one eight four seven. Um, but with gold, is what you generally see is if it wants to do something like go down, it will go up very aggressively and, and squeeze the people out. So maybe it'll make an attempt to to get back into these wicks before it then finally comes back down. You know, because the institutions, you know, have deep pockets. So I might be able to hold it for 15, 30, 40, 50 ticks. But if you take it up to 100 ticks, you know, not many people can hold that, and then it becomes very sharply down. Then uh, you know, it's it's the way they, they do, don't they? Okay, pan on fire. Good to see you, mate. Uh, yes, waiting for the pullback in GBP. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think, you know, what we could see is that, you know, we've been very strong. We've got this gap open. So, I mean, just going onto a blank chart, you've got two ways of looking at it. You know, we're either going to go from where the gap is. Okay, so we can get back to uh, the 50% of the gap. That's one trade. Or um, we go from the last significant move which was really not a great deal for the back either. And here. So really the two scenarios are that, you know, the pullback could get into the 50%, yeah, and then we carry on this, this this up move because the gap's still intact, or we get down to the 50%, yeah, and break it and go to the, the, the next 50%, which starts to eat into the gap, and then maybe we close the gap before we then go back up. So, the, you know, these are kind of scenarios... Either which way, we need to get back down to something before we go up. So we've either got to get, get to get down to one of these pivot points, these these Fibonacci levels here, 23. Well, let's just take the last one off. We've either got, got to get down to the 23.6 or the 38.2 or the 50 percent. And uh, you know, if we do that, then the, the market's got every opportunity to tell us what it wants to do. It'll either break through and close the gap, or it'll bounce off. So really, for me, your pivot point in the pound is one spot five. Three eight three nine. So we're either going to go down, close the gap from that point, or we're going to bounce and go up. So really, now you're in no man's land. You've got no man's land for the next kind of thirteen, fifty-three, and eighty-five ticks because we can go down and bounce. We can go down and bounce. Go down and bounce. But if you want to buy it, you have to know we could get down to that fifty percent. Yeah, I mean, you know, the uh, saying that the euro go down to parity, and I think because it's been said, it's self-fulfilling, isn't it? You know, if Deutsche Bank, who are twenty percent of the market, you know, are saying that we're going to get down to, uh, to to parity, then we're going to get parity, aren't we? It's simple as that. You know, well, you can't really argue with Deutsche Bank, can you? So I'd say, yeah, that's your pivot point to look at in the pound. We're either going to close the gap, continue down, or we're going to close the gap and bounce back up. So it's it's picking that right point in time. 
as I said, FTSE is not looking particularly weak or strong. Uh, I think the S&P, as long as we stay above you know, these key fib lines, is going to go back up. So really, it's just kind of status quo, guys, isn't it, really? It's just uh, expecting the market to continue what they've done in the past. You know, there's no... There's no real change, is there? You know, what the no news is is good news type scenario in the markets right now, I would say. So I'd expect, again, strength to remain in the indices. That uh, kick on with strength in the indices hopefully should trigger trigger gold down. And then, uh, again, I mean, the dollar is looking to regain some of its... Uh, some of its recent losses, but we are very high in the uh, in, in the dollar, so that you know that could have plenty of time to, to to come down before it goes back up. And you know, there's a lot of a lot of movement still in the dollar. I would say. All right, well, I, I guess there's not a lot I can bring. You know, we've kind of traded the fundamental data today. It was absolutely unchanged. Nothing has changed. So realistically, I think it's all about waiting for the U.S. Open. Anything that comes over the wires, any kind of you know uh, data that we're leading up to in the rest of the week to see what the markets will do. Any other thoughts or any questions, guys, before we go? I'm not just going to sit here and, and and talk about things for the sake of it. You know, you know, I'm not that kind of uh, kind of person. You know, I've traded well. We've gone through the, this this non-event that it turned out to be, but you know, we were here, we were prepared. You know, if something did happen, we would trade it. But there was nothing uh, nothing concrete from the BOV today, I'm afraid. So uh, as I said, I think it's status quo. Uh, what what was uh, in the markets is still in the markets, and it seems to be nothing but positivity right now. So find low points in the FTSE and uh, find low points in the pound and, and hold on. That, that's my advice. Yeah, surprised by the Conservative win margin, but, I mean, you have to think about who's voting, pan on fire. You know, you're not getting the people, uh, the, the Labour supporters, the UKIP supporters, all these people are very vocal when they're on telly. Uh, you know, the, these guys aren't the people that are out there voting, are they? I mean, that's, that's what's been proved. I mean, you get these people, just like the Scottish independents, you had all the kind of crazy council estate people that have nothing, have no jobs, have nothing to lose, saying, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But it's the people that have something to lose, people that have a job, people that have kids in, you know, kind of private education, people that have houses in London that is appreciated, you know, people that have something, something worth keeping. They're the people that will go out, take the effort and vote, and they're going to vote for what's best for them. And it was conservatives. You're not going to get UKIP in power or, you know, Ed Miliband in power with these, you know, big grand plans because you don't have the right kind of people to vote and back it up. And that's exactly what happened. And that's what, exactly what happened in the Scottish referendum. People voted with their head, not their heart, and they thought they'd be better off uh, being part of a, a union, economies of scale. And that's why, you know, the Scottish referendum failed and would fail again. So, I mean, again, these things are just... They're quite easy with hindsight, but I said, you know, on these webinars, I told you the Conservatives would get in because they're the people, you know, that have the voters. And unfortunately, you know, it's it's London and the rest of the country, isn't it? So London's very prosperous, but it in their vested interest, you know, to kind of keep house prices inflated and going up. I mean, the, the first thing on the FT was that, you know, a raft of wealthy overseas clients, you know, jumping back into the London markets, you know, because the Conservatives got in, because they want to pay the mansion tax, and interest rates are still relatively low. I mean, it's not really kind of rocket science, these, these things, is it? But I'm not an expert in politics. I'm an expert in trading. So I have an idea, you know, I'm good at predicting the future, and I thought it'd be status quo, and I didn't think myself that they'd get a majority. But there we go. You know, they, they have, and they're in the next four years. So it's the end of Labour as we know it. Um, I think they've got to re reinvent themselves completely and it's just another four year march until we put interest rates up and have a housing crash and that's it you know it's all absolutely inevitable isn't it all we're doing is buying time yeah i mean they voted for labor but they didn't get in did they so unfortunately that's just the way it is you know uh you know with with, with our proportional representational system you know it is what it is. So, yes, you know, it was you know, on the face of it disastrous for Labour. But, you know, it is, I don't know, it's difficult, isn't it? You know, politics is such a minefield. And, you know, I'm not here to be, you know, on the politicians in their favour or against them. You don't really care too much about politics, to be honest. It's uh, it, it's too much of a minefield, as I say, you know. But obviously, you know, the, 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 the parties that get in, the policies that are made, do have an effect and do give you an edge, you know, on what the markets could potentially do. But for me... As I said, it's status quo. The people, you know, have voted for what they want. Uh, it's Middle England versus the rest of the world. And it's now central London versus London. Uh, you know, that's the way it's going to be. House prices are going to be absolutely unobtainable for the normal person, for normal people, for, for forever now. That's it. You know, we've made our decision and that's it.
And, you know, good luck to them. You know, good luck to uh, the future generations. That's all I can say. You know, it's uh, if you start stop giving people the ability to, to, you know, to do stops for a lot of people, and then the people that are living get frightened, because this, if you, you know, we, we built this idea that people had debt, they had responsibility, they'd be good people, and that was all through the 50s, 60s, and 70s, it was right. Then it all changed in the, in the kind of 80s, 90s, and 2000s, where people used property as, as, as a measure of, of income, you know, and, and they treated it as, a, as an asset. And what we've done is we've stopped normal people being able to aspire to things. We've got a very small percentage of the population that because they've got cheap credit, they've made money in their houses, can do things that normally these people wouldn't be able to do because they don't earn enough money. Your average person that's got a, a you know a, a you know a two bed investment property, you know, is probably a teacher from Scunthorpe on, on forty grand a year, but they've been doing it for thirty years. Do you know what I mean these people don't earn a lot of money, so they can't support it? So they, they think they're richer than they are. You know, they're not. And again, when you've got a house, it's only worth what someone will pay for it. And if you want that money, you've got to cash it in and go and live in Spain. We saw that but worked out for a lot of people. People. So at the end of the day, when you stop making people aspire to have the house, to have that kind of stuff, and have that safety, you get the situation where people live in shared accommodations into the 30s, don't have kids, and then there's no demand in 20, 30 years for the property. And when that generation inherits all that property, so I've told you I will, I'll inherit five or six houses, I'll go and buy Lamborghinis with it because I've got my own money and I don't need the money. Okay, So you need to be thinking about that. You know, It's a longer term thing and the world's moving a lot quicker than people expect. The world will not be the same in 10, 15 years. You know, these kind of decades... You know, the, the decades and the changes seen in a decade will be more like five years or three years. The changes, you know, speeding up in the future will be like nothing we've ever seen. OK, so that means that the boom in property, the bust in property, the boom in investments, you know, and when you treat property as an investment. So you saw what, what, we, what happened with oil. If you treat it as a commodity like that, then it can lose 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent in a matter of, you know, months. You know, in six months, we could see property go down by 30 percent. And then where does that leave people? And when it happens, there's nothing any government, nothing any person can do. So that's the big problem we have. And that's why we're so frightened about interest rates, because we don't know what's going to happen when interest rates go up. All we know, nothing will be good. All right, guys. Well, listen, anything else you want to uh, get from me, just get me on my uh, Twitter handle at Steve Roughly. And uh, I'm doing another Steve's Trading Targets webinar after this on Intertrader. So just uh, feel free to uh, join into that. My education is always free, as you know. All right, guys. Well, listen, a uh, bit of a non-event. Wait for the US Open, but wait for the trend in the foot to continue. And I'd look to buy any low points in the pound. All right, guys. Have a great afternoon. Speak to you soon. Thanks.